So I have a feeling that if you are here, you love personality tests and finding out more about yourself. If you've never heard of Enneagram or have never taken an Enneagram quiz online, Jackie Coben, who is an Enneagram life coach from Table for Nine Coaching, is going to help us learn more about how Enneagram can benefit us and improve our lives. And if you do know what Enneagram is and you've taken a quiz before, you know your number, Jackie is going to share with us how to use it to manage our time and energy better in our businesses and in our lives. This interview was so much fun and I'm so excited to share it with you. So hit the like button below if you are ready to learn more about Enneagram and time management. Also, Jackie gave us a special gift of journal prompts, free journal prompts to help us identify and figure out where we need to improve our time management based on our Enneagram numbers. So go in the caption below and get your free journal prompts and let's get to the interview. Hey everyone, welcome to Ask the Expert time management session today with Jackie Coben. She is an Enneagram coach and she is absolutely amazing. I met her online oh, like months ago now and um, we have been talking and getting to know each other and I'm really excited to bring her on the show today. Welcome. Hi, thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure to meet you as well. Yeah, so um, I would love for you to just tell us a little bit about you and your business and, and how you got to where you are today. Yeah, so I am an Enneagram coach, a life coach, and I have a certification in neurolinguistics. But um, essentially, what I do is I help people give language to who, what, and why they are. Um, you know, essentially their, their fears, their motivations, their desires, their, you know, their why so that they can live a more sustainable life. So that's just, that's kind of me in a nutshell. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. So how did, how did you get to like that passion a little, you don't have to go into like the whole nitty gritty right. or anything, but, um, how did you end up here? Well, I was working in a, I was headhunted for a nonprofit um, where I was doing six or seven roles for the price of one. And I started to feel really burnt out and, and was trying to communicate, hey, I, I can't, I'm, at, oh, I'm, I'm not gifted here. I'm not gifted there. And um, they were like, oh, here's this leadership book. Here's, and I just was like, I don't have the language to describe what I'm good at. And then I was like, well, I don't have the language to describe anything about me except like my favorite flavor of popcorn. Like, you know, what? triggers me, what, what pisses me off. I didn't have any of that language. So I got into the Enneagram and I feel like it put a mirror in front of my face and was like, deal with her. And from there, when I began my coaching practice, um, I was kind of like, you know, I don't want to work with some, you know, structured one size fits all type program. I want to work with the person I'm working with. So I use Enneagram as a staple. Yeah, I love that. Do you remember the day? I, this is just a one-off question. Like, I want to know. Do you remember the day that you um, found Enneagram? Like, mm -hmm. what was that like? I was okay. It's weird, but I was sitting on my toilet. Um, <laughs> honestly, I was sitting on my toilet in my one of my apartments that was really close to New York City. Um, I'm still I still live around there, but like just super close. So it was really tiny and. If I sat on the toilet, I could put my feet up on the bathtub. So I did that. I was just sitting and scrolling and I looked out the window and I saw the New York City skyline and I was like, what a great day. And then I was like, oh, this test. So I did the test online, kept typing in a, a wrong fashion. So I was like, mm. so I took another test. And then when I came to my type, I literally like, I just like locked my phone and put it down and just stared into the abyss for like an hour. I, I was... I wept um, when I figured out my type, when I figured out, because it's, it's, it really is like, you know, this thing, you know about yourself, but you've never given language to, and you've never said out loud, here it is, buddy. And so I wept for days. I cried. I didn't eat. I didn't talk to anybody. And then I purchased a book on it and just started doing my research and cried a lot more. But it was, I remember that I was sitting on my toilet. I was taking, yeah. yeah. I absolutely love that. I really do. And um, yeah, like literally I have goosebumps right now. Like to to resonate with something so much that you're like, it changes your life. Like in the instant that yeah. that happens. And um, yeah, yeah, so I'm really grateful for, for your work and, and resonating with Enneagram and um, hopefully sharing with us a little bit on how to manage your time better with Enneagram. Yeah. Um, so just as like an entrepreneur, my one of my favorite questions, of course, is how do you what is your favorite way of managing your time? Like, do you have a specific tool or tip that you like to use or or anything? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, of course, you know, and everyone's going to tell you this, 
if it's not on your calendar, it's not going to happen. So definitely, but also, um, you know, I can give myself a lot of tasks in a day, like, Oh, this would be great to get done on Wednesday. I don't really have a timeline for it. Um, but essentially it's, it's not scheduling myself back to back. It's leaving gaps in the time that I schedule. So if I give myself an hour for a project, I'd like a half hour in between before the next one, because I don't want to steal time from the next thing that I'm doing. That So honestly, using my calendar and leaving a lot of gaps are the best way to time manage. And then um, outside of that, I, I have a you know a software, like I use Asana for just for task management. It doesn't tell me times or anything, but I don't give myself more than X amount of tasks a day, depending on how, like if it's content creation, it might be a lot, but I don't give myself more than like four big rock tasks a day because I'm like, well, I'm not going to do it. And then I'm going to feel like crap if I keep putting it off. (laughs) Yeah. And you know, I think that I just want to like make a tie here of like what, you know, what I teach people because of of who I am and what I do. And, and I love this tie between what we do is the more, you know, yourself, the more, the better you're going to manage your time, right? Like that's basically what I just heard from you. You know, that you're going to feel like crap about yourself if you put too much on your plate and you have become more realistic on what you put on your calendar, right? As you get to know yourself. Right. And that's really beautiful. I love that so much. Yeah. Yeah. Um, also, I just want to say that like leaving space for like, like, what do you do when you when you have those like gaps? Do you end up like scrolling? Or do you end up like using the time for like the previous project? Or what do you end up typically doing? Um. It, so if I have, if I actually have the time, I will like, I'm, I tend to be intentional about it. So I'll get up and I'll drink water, like, especially, but if I feel like I'm, I'm okay and I have water with me, I might like make a graphic on Canva or I might, um, answer those three emails back to back, like something that I can stop in the middle of and then pick up later. I don't like to start projects that need to be completed that like in that moment that I know I'm not going to, I, I don't feel it. I'm not like, I can't, I can't do that. So I'm a little bit of a control freak there, but I mean, I I'll do something that doesn't rob me of my energy and that's like that. So those half hours are sacred. I can still do work, but I'm not robbed of energy. Yeah. I love that so much. I, yeah, that's so beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Um, so for someone that doesn't know anything about Enneagram and I'm, I'm a beginner, honestly, okay. um, I know like my type, what, like, what is it? Okay. Um, essentially it's people say personality type and that's the easiest way to describe it, but, um, it's like an internal roadmap and, you know, Myers-Briggs, for example, is like, um, outside in, it's how I see the outside world, but with the Enneagram, it's inside out. So it bases your core fears, motivations, desires, the core longing, the thing that you've been dying to hear, your childhood wound, all of that. And it's inside out where it's, well, because of how, what you're afraid of, because of what you're motivated by, this is how you act. This is how you see the world. So it really paints this picture of your personality type by way of worldview. So it's almost like action reaction. And it, it's there's so there's nine main types, but there's over like 160 variations of it. So it's just so to the T, it gets to the heart of things. And I I think that's why it's the most sustainable thing. I think we look at Myers-Briggs or like BuzzFeed's What Pasta Are You? And we're like, these are excuses. We use these as like excuses. We're like, oh, I I can't. I'm introverted. Sorry, I'm tired. Like, or, oh, I'm sorry. I'm like judging and not intuitive. I don't know. I don't, I don't know the order of the (laughs) letters, but um, with the Enneagram, it really like, it, it gives you this space to learn what you do when you're your most healthy and when you're at your not so not so best and it kind of acts as like rumble strips like you're you didn't realize you were veering off on the side of the road and all of a sudden it's like and you're like oh boy like get back so it's it's really really helpful in that way and a lot of people take online tests don't recommend because i mistyped a million times before you know before i always say work with a coach but it really it's really changed my life i i know stuff now that i did not know about myself before Wow. Yeah. So what, like, what would the difference be between obviously like online tests, like that are 10, 30 questions are not comprehensive enough, but, um, like what, what is missing? Do you think in the quizzes or or online stuff? Yeah. So I think it's, I think it's the, um, you have to have a very high level of self-awareness and if you do like to take those tests and if you do, you probably don't need a test like that. So, um, let's say like, 
for example, type one on the Enneagram is a perfectionist. So of course they, they, you know, they don't, or like a reformer, but they don't want things to be wrong. And type five really doesn't want anyone chiseling away at their incompetence. So they don't want to get things wrong. So if the question is, do you fear looking stupid? Yes, but there's no why. So as a coach, I might be like, well, why? And the type one will be like, I just, I don't, I don't like to get things wrong because I think that if the world around me is wrong, then I'm bad. And the type five would be like, I don't want anyone to tell me I'm stupid. Like, you know, so it's, it, it's really about poking where it hurts in a sense. And I know that sounds really, really harsh, but like, like I said before, Buzzfeeds, what pasta are you? Or what character from Laguna beach would you be? Like the, really those scores are, um, they tally up a score and it works for that type of quiz. But for something that really is going to gauge your motivations, you need someone to sit across from you and go, well, why? Or tell me the first time that's ever happened to you and and hear the story. Mm, Yeah. I can imagine that that's a really intense process. (laughs) I mean, I had, I've had, I had a client once. She's like, I'm either a three or a nine. I need you to figure it out. We went through the whole thing and I was like, honey, you're a five. Sorry. (laughs) She was like, no. I was like, "Mm -hmm." I don't want (laughs) to Yeah, I took it. I took, um, I did. Do you know who Don Miller is? Yeah. Brand story. Yeah. So I, I did um, his business made simple course okay. like a while ago and they have an Enneagram and that's how I found it. Okay. Um, and you know, I, it's a quiz that, you know, whatever, but, um, yeah, it's, it was really interesting to, to learn. And, um, I'm, I would say I'm somewhat fairly self-aware, but I think we all think we're self-aware. So I don't know. I would love to dive more into that, um, maybe on a one-on-one basis, but, um, yeah. Why do you think you connected with Enneagram so much? I think, well, specifically for my type, the type two, I'm a helper. Surprise. Um, (laughs) But that type tends to self-abnegate. So not only will they not speak their needs, but they're usually unaware of what they are. And unaware, like if you ask them, they won't know, but aware enough that if they hear it, they know. And so hearing those things about myself, it immediately registered as something that was missing, something I couldn't put language to. Um, So that, it made me resonate. I was in a really unhealthy place. I was feeling super burnt out. I didn't have the language or the capacity to say, I need a work environment like this. I need you to start paying me more than $360 a week for doing six roles. I need, you know, I didn't have any of that in me. So it resonated when they, when I'm reading the Enneagram and it's like, you need to start asking for your needs. You need to stop assuming people know what you need. And I was like, shut up. (laughs) It's very difficult. Um, but you resonate. I mean, they, I, I always tell people this and everyone says this, you know, the, the types description that hurts the most is usually yours. And it hurt my feelings. And I was like, mm-hmm. okay, so there's something, there's something to it here. And I think, I mean, the, so the Enneagram works with centers of intelligence. So, you know, there are three brains in the body, your head, your heart, and your gut. And, um, you know, I, I'm in the heart center. And so being able to sit there and even sit, like say like, oh, so my heart is how I see information, hear information, give information, tell stories, perceive. It's how I see the world. That made things a lot clearer for me where I was like, oh, I'm so much more emotional than most other people. So it just yeah. connected. It, it filled in the missing gaps that I didn't really have language for. I didn't grow up in a, I grew up in a Middle Eastern family. We don't do self-awareness. Hmm. I don't know if many, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't know if many like cultures have historically. No. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so what are what are some of the shifts like off like off the cuff? Like what do you think uh shifted for you maybe in specifically in regards to time management or just generally speaking once you got to know yourself better with Enneagram? Yeah, so I think look, with with all the Enneagram types, we all have a relationship to time. Some types feel like they're running out of time constantly and they have to beat the clock. Some types feel like they you know, kind of need to abuse time and get the most out of it and some tend to procrastinate. And each one of those things has a why. That's like the unhealthy spectrum. So in my relation to time, when I would procrastinate something, I, because I know I'm very good at time management, when I procrastinate, I have to think about why. And that's caused me to be like, actually, this is something you don't want to do. And it's been like, okay, well, actually, you're going to you're gonna hire a VA for a day and you're going to delegate this. Or that friend that's been begging you to just help because he's got a lot of free time, send this graphic his way and have him make it. So it kind of, it puts it into perspective. I think there's always a why for procrastination. There's always a why. And if 
you don't, if it's like, oh, it's just going to take so long. I don't believe that for a second. I really don't. I, I, I think it, there's a deeper why. And that's what resonated with me where I was like, okay, in regards to time management, I'm either abusing my time by staying up super, super late, or I'm trying to beat the clock or I'm procrastinating. And when any of those things come up, I have to figure out why and deal with that internally. Yeah. I think in, in knowing like your type, right. It's easier Mm -hmm. to dig into like that deeper why. And yeah, Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's a really great um, example. So would you say that like you, like you find yourself procrastinating less and, you know, doing, doing all three of those things a little bit less now? Yeah. A hundred percent. I mean, I like, I think that, you know, I mean, I started my own business and I would not have done that without the Enneagram because I just, I didn't have the tools. Like I would have started it and then it would have crashed and burned. So um, I do, like, I do have my moments and I respect those moments where I look at a whole day of tasks and I'm completely turned off and I have no meetings. I'm not like, okay, I'm not procrastinating any one task. I, my body has this aversion to doing things right now. So I might be like, I'm going to start work at 2 p.m. instead and just watch the office and clean my apartment and whatever and then get into it. Um, so kind of knowing the difference, like I, it's been able to help me gauge really what's going on internally. And I think we need that. I, the last thing that we need is to be completely unaware of what our body and our mind and our spirit is signaling us. Yeah, especially right now with, with you know, COVID and like all of the things that are shifting in our, in our lives. I think yeah. it's just 100% so important to tune in and um, find the difference, like you said, between <laughs> procrastinating and putting things off because of fear, because of, you know, whatever the underlying issue is, or um, just that you're tired and you need a break yeah. and you need to chill. <laughs> 100%. 100%. <laughs> yeah. So um, for someone that wants to manage their time better, like what, what advice would you give them in terms of Enneagram? I would say, of course, figure out your type first, um, because every single type has a specific relation to time. Um, so you're a type five, correct? I'm a four wing five, a four wing five. Okay. So sometimes a four would procrastinate or put off things because they're starting to not look as ideal as they had pictured. Mm. and so it's important to know your type it's important to know because it, it sometimes it's kind of built in where a, a type five and you might feel this too like with your wing is that they feel like time is never really on their side they can't really manage so those things might be at odds a little and so every every single type and it's not for everybody like some people are just like no i was raised with really good time management and this is what i have like that's perfect good for you but um each type has a very different relationship to time and it's really important to figure out your type and then figure out what your relationship to time is, but also not just time itself, like the hours in the day, but also energy and effort because that does play a part. Like if you manage your time really well, but you just sit there and stare at your computer screen, I mean, really you have an organized calendar, but nothing really gets done. So just like recognizing your relationship both to time and then energy and effort within your type and then kind of going, okay, where has the problem been? Like, so for me, um, I have a very strong one wing, right? So I'm like, okay, I, sometimes I don't want to start things because I can't give my hundred percent. And that is how I procrastinate because I'm afraid it's not going to be perfect. So Mm -hmm. I have to like sit there and evaluate that and be like, well, I think this is going to be a good thing. I can go back and fix it later. There's no due date on this. So I'm just going to start it now and just reevaluate that within myself, within my type and be aware of that. Yeah. I love that. That's great. And um, yeah, I just think it's so important. Like this whole conversation, honestly, it's just about getting to know yourself better. Like yeah. the better you know yourself, but honestly, like the puzzle pieces fit into place in so many areas in life, but especially, you know, time management and being able to get whatever you want done. And, and it's just so, so important and so amazing. And um, so if someone wanted to work with you, where, where would they find you? Where, where can they learn more from you? Um, yeah, so I am on Instagram at table for nine coaching. It's F O R and the digit nine. Uh, everyone gets that confused. They're like table 49. I'm like, no. Um, <laughs> and then my website's the same. It's table for nine coaching.com. And then after you've watched every single one of Becca's videos twice, I have a podcast, the table for nine podcast. Love it. Yeah. I'm so excited for your podcast. I love it so much. (laughs) Cool. Is there any last words of wisdom or anything that you want to share today? 
Um, I think the only thing I would say, to be honest, is if we look at how the world has changed in the last four months with COVID, um, it's already changed tremendously before that too. Work styles are changing, office layouts, bullpen, individual offices. Now it's work from home. The only thing that's going to be sustainable in life, love, and work is self-awareness. So make a, make that a high priority. Invest in yourself. A painful one-hour session dealing with the person in the mirror is going to do, do you a world of good. Yeah, for sure. Mirror work is so, so challenging, but so rewarding. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. You're right. It is. It's really hard. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Yeah, it is. For sure. Physically, I'm looking at my bathroom, but like physically actually looking at yourself in the mirror and doing mirror work, but also any self-awareness work is just so, so impactful and yeah. So rewarding. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Well, thank you so much for coming on today. And I'm excited to share this with you. And um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me or Jackie. We would love to answer any of your questions. And I'll see you later. Bye.